Sorry guys, this is like the longest video in the world. I'll have a, uh, a timestamp down below where you can skip to the end to see all the good parts if you don't want to sit through all the boring SI. Okay, so this week we are typing Kamala Harris, which I am super excited about. Uh, I think she's going to be a really fun person to uh, get to know for a week, which is really exciting. Um, I don't really know, like I don't have any idea of what type her is, what type she is going in. Um, I kind of have no real assumptions, except that like I don't feel like she's me. Like I don't feel like she's feminine Effie at the top. Um, so like not my type would be my only kind of assumption going in. Otherwise, I really don't know. So yeah, this should be fun. So I've uh, watched uh, quite a few interviews of Kamala um, so far, and I have to say nothing really major is jumping out at me. Um, she seems pretty balanced in all the letters. She seems pretty balanced in all the functions. Um, there's no coin that's like jumping out at me as like the most obvious coin. So um, I just, I, I can't really get a, a hold on anything really concrete yet, but I do feel like, I, so I'm watching this interview and I, I think I'm starting to see um, sensory. So she's going to tell this story about um, uh, same-sex marriage and Prop 8 and why that you know, this is a very important issue for her. And I'm gonna play it on fast speed because it's a little, a little slow. So actually it was in February of 2004. Um, I was just, I took office as DA of San Francisco January 8th, 2004. The Valentine's weekend, um, San Francisco, we decided to start um, marriages for same-sex couples. So Gavin Newsom was at the mayor at the time, Dennis Rivera was the city attorney. There were a bunch of folks who decided this is the right thing to do and so let's do it. And um, so I stopped by City Hall, and let me tell you what I saw. And it's a beautiful building architecturally, um, and occupies a full square block. And I pulled up to see families wrapped around this whole block, and down the street, and down the street, and down the street, with pure joy. Families of every age, of every ethnicity, and just, it, there's something I'm sure in science or physics about when you have such a large number of people in such a specific space, and what that does to the air, in terms of the, 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 the joy, pure joy. So I got off. So really, really painting a very clear sensory picture for the setup of this story. Um, you know, I can tell exactly where she was, exactly what was going on, exactly what the scene was like. And also actually a lot of feelings as well as she's telling the story. Car, and um, it was the assessor at the time. And she ran on steps and she said, Kamala, can you perform some marriages? We need more people. <laughs> and I was like, sure. And, um, and so I went up. And, and there we were, the few of us who were elected officials who could perform marriages in every like nook and cranny of City Hall. Like, I mean, just like drive-by weddings, right? <laughs> like literally, <laughs> I just, and, and, and it was incredible. And then of course, and I talk about this whole thing in the book, but then it, then it happened that the court invalidated and so on and so on. And so fast forward, you can read the book. And fast forward. <laughs> so she has so much sensory that she's kind of like, I don't want to give the sensory. The sensory is all in the book, which if her book is like a sensory book, it might be indicative of her being a censor. She's referring to the book, but she has a lot more, sounds like sensory information here. Rick, please read the book, please read the book. <laughs> to, um, to Prop 8. And so when I ran for Attorney General, it was at the time that the voters, sadly, regrettably, the voters of California passed Prop 8, which denied same-sex couples the ability to marry. And so it was being litigated. And I said that if I was elected Attorney General, I was not going to defend Prop 8. My opponent said he would. My opponent said he would. And there's a long story again, about the election night, because election night and that election um, took place over 21 days. Um, and that was 21 days after my opponent declared his victory. <laughs> uh, Little side tangent, that's kind of a sensory side tangent. But let's bypass all of that drama <laughs> for a moment. Um, and so I refused to, 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 to defend it. It went to the United States Supreme Court on a standing issue. And this, this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. Supreme Court did the right thing, said that they didn't have standing in any event. Um, Sandy Steer and Chris Perry, um, the, one of the two couples that the litigation was about, um, there's, they were on their way back to California and they called me and said, would you perform the first marriage? And so I did, and it was incredible. And it was an incredible day. And, um, and it was, you know, it marks a moment in the ongoing fight that we have 
for equality. Okay, so now she's getting to her actual point of the story. She like did the setup with all of the sensory. This happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. And now this brings us to the point. In our country. And it gets back to the earlier point we were making. This is an ongoing process. You know, Coretta Scott King famously said, and I'll paraphrase, the fight for civil rights, which, you know, that means the fight for equality, the fight for justice, the fight for freedom, the fight for civil rights must be fought and won with each generation. And I think she had two points. One being, it's the very nature of these fights, that whatever gains we make will not be permanent. It's the nature of it. So, the second so making a point, and kind of an NF point, actually, seems like. The second point, then, is understanding it is the nature of it. Do not despair. Don't throw up our hands when it's time to roll up our sleeves. And so that's what that moment was. It was one of those moments where the fight won, and we still have more work to do on that issue in terms of the, 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 the equality under the law for our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, and equality under the law for so many others. And we can go down and listen, talk about a lot of it in the book. <laughs> <laughs> so the way I see SI is like setting up the sensory details so that you can tell a blaster point. Like, so Shannon and Dave have recently been referring to NI Blast as like providing context. And I almost feel like SI Blast is kind of doing the same thing, but in like a little bit of a backwards way. Um, you know, and I see myself doing this, like providing sensory context. So you know kind of what led up to this and then making the, um, the blaster point, like the intuitive point. Here it sounds like an NF point a little bit, um, which is just like, sometimes that's useful, but a lot of times it's not. And um, in particular, I'm starting to think of, okay, I'm starting to wonder if NT blast is the most efficient form of blast. Because SI blast seems like, let me tell you where I've been so I can tell you where we're going. Whereas N, well, I guess maybe just NI blast, not specifically NT, but NI blast is like just straight to, let me tell you where we're going. There's no like, let me tell you where we've been so that you know the entire picture. It's just like, let me just get straight to the point. So it's like, I'm starting to see SI is just like the less efficient version of blast. And I do this, like, so for example, when I turned on this video today, just like a few minutes ago, I, I started this with like, so I've watched a few hours of Kamala so far. Here's where I am in typing her. Here's what I've done. Here's what I think. Now I've set this up for you and now let me get into talking about, you know, what I'm seeing. Like, why do I have to start a video saying, okay guys, just so you know, I've already watched some videos of Kamala. This isn't the first video, like just so you guys know where I am, like sensory wise. Why do I have to say that? Because I'm obligated to give you kind of the sensory context before I make the blaster point. I can't just go to the blaster point. So it almost feels like, like the wrong tool for the job. Um, and I'm trying to see, actually, so I'm trying to test whether I can actually use that for typing. Like for this, it's like she wants to make a point about same-sex marriage, and she's telling this very detailed sensory story about how she personally experienced, like her personal experience with same-sex marriage. And it's just like, it's like, you can't just get straight to the point about what you think about same-sex marriage, you know? So it's starting to feel like just the wrong tool for the job. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was an interesting story. I actually really enjoyed listening to it, but it would make as much sense if she had just told the intuitive point at the end. Like, it was interesting, I enjoyed it. I very much enjoyed hearing about it, but it wasn't necessary, I guess is what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, based on that, I'm kind of seeing wrong tool for the job kind of a thing and probably save your SI because like that was a lot of sensory, like like a lot of sensory before you get to an intuitive point. Um, could someone with intuition, savior, give that much sensory? Probably not. I would think someone with save your NI, like save your NI blast, probably would not give that much sensory. Um, save your NE, like their blast would be SI, 
but they would not want to give that much SI. So I'm definitely thinking probably save your SI at this point. All right, so here she's going to kind of touch on um, feeling and thinking. So I want to see if I can get a sense of her thinking and feeling uh, functions. Hypothetically, yeah. and if asking for a friend, you know, if you were president, how would you bring this country together? I would remind us of what we all know in our hearts and our souls. The vast majority of us have so much more in common than separates us. I said that earlier, and I really mean it. I mean it when I know and think about who we are, I, and when I think about when, when we, when those of us wake up in the middle of the night, and there are so many of us who do, in the middle of the night with the thought that's been weighing on us. You know, some people call it the, the witching hour, the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning. For the vast majority of Americans, when we wake up in the middle of the night with that thought, maybe in a cold sweat, we are never thinking that thought through the lens of the party with which we're registered to vote. We are never thinking that thought through the lens of some demographic or poll system. And for the vast majority of us, when we wake up thinking that thought, it has to do with one of just a very few things. Our personal health, the health of our children or our parents. For so many Americans, can I get a job, keep a job, pay the bills by the end of the month, retire with dignity for our students, can I pay off those student loans? The vast majority of us have so much more in common than what separates us. We have to hold on to that knowledge and paint a picture of the future and have a vision of the future in which everyone can see themselves. It's critically important. And I believe we can achieve that, but not if we, not if we um, don't fight. We gotta fight to get there. We gotta fight to get there, and it's worth it. And it is worth it because all said and done, flawed though we may be, imperfect though we may be, this country is worth fighting for. And so she's talking about thinking and how she thinks thoughts and how we're so much more similar than we are different and uh, her vision for the future and how the future has to you know, include ourselves in it. So I feel like she's talking about her functions, like this should be function talk, but I can't quite get a grasp on what functions she's referring to here. Cause she talks about her thoughts. She wakes up in the middle of the night, the witching hour, um, with thoughts that are kind of worrying her, thoughts about her family. So like, are those introverted thoughts or are those extroverted thoughts? I can't quite tell. Um, but it seems like, it seems like she's talking about functions. I just can't pinpoint what functions she's talking about. So I've also been looking into Kamala's, um, I guess, reputation kind of in the Senate. So she is a former prosecutor and uh, she's known for being fairly aggressive in her questioning, like when she's, you know, uh, in hearings and whatnot. Um, and I've watched several clips of her. And uh, I mean, she's kind of aggressive. It's hard to say if it's, I mean, aggressive is usually some kind of masculine energy, right? Either masculine sensory or masculine DE, usually. It's hard to pick up the masculine feminine vibe with her, um, but I do think I am seeing SI. So I have a, um, a few clips to play. So this is her um, questioning Brett Kavanaugh um, during his hearing. I guess uh, and I'll ask the answer to that is time. yes. So the answer is yes. Okay, and did you talk with anyone at Kasowitz, Benson, and Torres? You, you asked me that, I need to know who works there. I think you can answer the question without me giving you a list of all employees of that law firm. Well, actually, I can't. I, Why not? Because I don't know who works there. So that's the only way you would know who you spoke with? I, I want to understand your, your, your response to my question, because it's a very direct one. Did you speak with anyone at that law firm about the Mueller investigation? It's a very... It's a very direct question. It's a very specific question. I just need this very small bit of sensory information, and the sensory that I need is very, very specific. Very direct question. Right. I'd be, I'd be surprised, but I don't know anyone. I don't know if the... I don't know everyone who works at that law firm, so I just want to be careful because your question was and or. So I want to be very literal. That's, that's fine. I'll ask a more direct question if that's helpful to you. Did you speak with anyone at that law firm about Bob, Bob Mueller's investigation? I'm not remembering anything like that, but I want to know a roster of people and I want to know more. So you're not denying that you've spoken with well, I, I okay. So just, I'm asking a very, very direct, very specific question about the sensory. And I've watched, um, you know, several, several clips of her and she seems to really be 
honing on, you know, very specific sensory in a very like prosecutorial way. She's a former prosecutor, but in a kind of just aggressive sensory way. Uh, okay, so here she's questioning Jeff Sessions. Did you ever communicate with him in writing? I don't believe so. And um, you referred to a longstanding DOJ policy. Um, can you tell us what policy it is you're talking about? Well, I think most cabinet people, as the witnesses uh, you had before you earlier, those individuals uh, declined to comment because we're all about conversations with the president. Sir, I'm just asking you about the DOJ policy you referred policy. to. I'm just asking about this very specific sensory that goes beyond just the attorney general. Is that policy in writing somewhere? Uh, I, I think so. Do you have sensory proof of that? So? So did you not consult it before you came before this committee knowing we would ask you questions about well, that? Well, we, we talked. And why don't you know your own sensory? Talked about it. The, the policy is did based. Did you ask that it would be shown to you? The policy is based on the principle that the president. Sir, uh, I'm not asking about the principle. I'm asking when well, you I'm think able would be to asked these the questions. Question. I'm not asking about the principle. I'm asking about the specific sensory and you would rely on that policy did you not ask your staff to show you the policy that would be the basis for you refusing to answer the Chairman, majority of questions that have been be asked allowed to answer the question senators will allow the chair <laughs> to control the hearing senator harris let him answer please do. Uh, thank you approval Mr. Chairman, of the president i have asked and that's the uh situation we're in for a yes or no did you ask so your the answer is yes i consulted policy. So Did you ask your uh, staff Senator to see the policy? Expired. <laughs> <coughs> Apparently Senator not. Senator Cornyn. So just like hammering on the sensory. I also, um, I wonder what type Jeff Sessions is. You know, he's such an interesting character. I mean, this is just like a good sidetrack, but if anyone has any guesses about what Jeff Sessions type is, I would like to know because I have no idea. Um, but he'd be fun to type one day. Uh, anyways, just lots and lots of sensory. And then I have one more. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney General Barr, has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh... Yes or no? Yes or no? Did you, did you repeat that question? I will repeat it. Yeah. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Yes or no, please, sir. Yes or no. Um, the president or anybody else. Seems you'd remember something like that and be able to tell us. Yeah, but I'm... I Seems you'd remember the sensory. Okay. Um, so, yeah, just a lot of sensory hammering on the sensory. The sensory is very specific. The sensory is not scattered, essy, you know, whatever. It's very specific sensory. Um, okay, so then I'm also thinking in this type of a hearing, um, you know, when you're questioning someone in this type of um, very direct manner, I kind of think the norm is always to go to sensory. You know, these types of, I guess, just like questioning of you know person questioning someone in this type of way is is a very si type of thing to do so i kind of wonder if anyone who's in um this type of scenario would always kind of lean towards appearing si just because that's the way these hearings kind of work um so i wanted to look at another um politician so um ocasio cortez so she is Okay, so I don't think she's actually been officially typed, but I know some people, um, some people in the community have typed her as I think an INTJ, so NI at the top. So I wanted to kind of see what her questioning style was and see if she was kind of doing the same kind of SI thing. And it's also like, I mean, comparing her to Kamala Harris is a little bit like, comparing apples to oranges, you know, I mean, Kamala's been, she has a lot more experience than AOC, right? Like, you know, just, she does. It's, it's, it's apples to oranges, or maybe more like apples to baby apples. I don't know. 
Um, so it's not really a fair comparison, but I kind of just want to see how someone with NI at the top handles questioning someone in a kind of similar um, type of context. Good to see you, Mr. Zuckerberg. I think you of all people can appreciate seeing a person's past behavior in order to determine, predict, or make decisions about the future. Okay, so your past behavior predicts your future behavior. It kind of sounds like past behavior is kind of like past sensory SI. In order for us to make decisions about Libra, I think we need to kind of dig into your past behavior and Facebook's past behavior with respect to our democracy. We need to dig into the past. Kind of we need to dig into the sensory. That seems like it could be SI. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, what year and month did you personally first become aware of Cambridge Analytica? That's sensory. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact time, but it was... When did Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg become aware of Cambridge Analytica? That's sensory. And on December 11, 2015. Sensory. Uh, Congresswoman, I, 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 I do think I, I was aware of Cambridge Analytica as an entity earlier. I, I don't know if I was tracking how they were using Facebook. When was the issue discussed with your board member, Peter Thiel? Sensory. Congresswoman. You don't, you don't know? Well, Congresswoman. Or we discussed it after, it, uh, after we were aware of what happened. Um, you announced recently that the official policy of Facebook now allows politicians to pay to spread disinformation um, in 2020 elections and in the future. So I just want to know how far I can push this. And now she's going into intuition. So she's speeding up going into the intuition. So this is like two minutes into questioning Mark Zuckerberg. So she had like three sensory questions lined up and now she's like, okay, let's roll. Let's go on to the intuition. Um, in the next year. Under your policy, you know, using census data as well, could I pay to target predominantly black zip codes and advertise them the incorrect election date? Can I do this hypothetical thing? No, Congresswoman, you couldn't. We, we have... We have that. But you said you're not going to fact check my we, ads. We have, if, if uh, anyone... Including but hypothetically, you wouldn't do that I, thing. Uh, policy. Political advertisement. Is that what you're telling me? Well, Okay, so anyways, that's that's all the point I wanted to make. But it is just like, I mean, she starts out doing the sensory, reading from her little sensory notes. And she has this very kind of, um, I don't know what kind of body language this is, but just more like, what's the word I'm looking for? Not relaxed, you know? And then she goes into intuition here. And like, look how relaxed she is. She's like, yeah, this is home turf. This is where I live. I live in intuition land. Kamala is like, I live in sensory land. Like this, SI is home turf for Kamala. This is what she's doing all day, every day. This kind of a sensory thing. Tell me this specific direct sensory information. That is her home turf. For Ocasio-Cortez, this is her home turf. Intuition is her home turf versus tell me this specific direct sensory information. So um, yeah, now I'm starting to be uh, pretty certain that she's probably savior SI. All right, so this is what I've got for Kamala so far. Um, so far, I can all I can really prove is that she's savior SI and that she's a blaster. So Blast, I'm seeing very, very clearly. SI, I'm seeing pretty clearly, um, with the exception that she doesn't seem to be leaving a massive void of intuition. Like she's not, she's not like not doing the intuition. She, she's using intuition. Um, it's just, it's always after sensory and it looks like sensory is the thing that she's really, really standing on. So, um, that I feel fairly confident about. Um, I'm also thinking that she's in here, so I'm thinking that she's lead blast, meaning she's savior DE. I'm starting to get a sense of kind of a void of DI, like she's not talking about herself very much. Um, you know, I've watched a lot of videos of her so far, and I'm not. I'm not getting as much of a sense of who she is as just like a person, as an individual. Um, she's really good about talking about her ideas about other people and about the outside world, but I don't get a sense of her. So it kind of just has a vibe of like void of DI. Um, 
And she, uh, so like, what, for example, one of the hobbies that she has is she likes cooking. And she has a lot of videos on her YouTube channel of herself cooking with other people. And she has like a little, almost like a little fake cooking show, not a show, but like she like interviews other people while she cooks and they cook together and, you know, yada yada. She does a lot of cooking stuff, which is something that kind of seems like it's in her DI, something that she just really likes, um, that she grew up doing. It's one of the, like her little hobbies. Um, and that's and that's great and I feel like I can know her better from watching those videos but her videos always do turn into talking about someone else like she'll cook with someone else and then even though she's like hey I really like cooking she's still talking about the other person the entire time you know so her little videos about her little hobby end up being videos about other people so I'm just getting a lot of DE vibes even though I feel like I can't, I don't have like one home run clip to prove that. It's just overall, when watching her, seeing lots of DE. Um, one of the other things that I'm starting to kind of maybe see is maybe save your feeling. That's really hard to pick up because she's very balanced on thinking and feeling. Like seems like, like I'm saying thinking all the time and feeling all the time. She's balanced on both. But I sort of feel like when she's standing on something, it seems to be feeling. And then I also wonder, like, when I'm watching her little cooking things, it seems like her cooking is, like, kind of one of the things that she, like, T.I. does. It's like she has her way of doing things, and when she's showing people how to cook, it's like, here's the best way to do this. And, like, I've really sat and, like, thought about this, and this is, like, the way that you cut this thing. Versus a TE person would just be like, oh, you can do it like this, you can do it like this, you can do it like this, etc. So I'm starting to pick up some standing on feelings and then thinking um, linked to identity and thinking that's narrowed. Um, but what I'm not seeing is Effie. You know, I'm not seeing Savior Effie. So um, I don't feel too confident about that, but it's just like a little thing that I'm picking up. It's also, if that were the case, if she were Savior Effie, then she would be an SFJ, S-I-F-E or F-E-S-I. And the first thing I said when, when I watched her was like, she's not me, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't feel, she doesn't have an SFJ vibe to me. Um, she didn't like feel like my function. She doesn't feel like Effie. She has a T-E vibe. She has an I-S-T-J vibe to me. S I and T E. That's her her vibe, um, and she just has a thinker vibe. But maybe that's because she's a politician, and sometimes politicians can have thinker vibes, you know. So I I, I don't know about that, um, but that's just something that I'm wondering about. And then I was kind of getting well for this consume last. I was getting not sleep last and not play last, which would leave consume last. And I was definitely getting a double activated blast vibe. Um, but again, I can't really prove that. Um, and then she's not super decidery, but she's also not super single observery either. You know, there's just, it's hard to get, like she's not having any freakouts on camera. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> so it's hard to get a sense of that. Um, but I think I'm gonna see if I can go after this DE and maybe the feeling above thinking. Um, but I might not be able to get anything beyond this. We'll see. Um, but you ultimately decided against being an activist yourself. And in, in your book, you wrote, you know, when activists came marching and banging on doors, I wanted to be on the other side to let them in. Yeah. What was appealing about being on the other side of that door to you? Part of it was... Um... It tr honestly and candidly, um, the idea that I wouldn't have to ask permission. Hmm. Permission. To do the things that I, need, I knew needed to be changed. Um, and what do you mean candidly, by permission? Well, for example, when I became DA of San Francisco, almost immediately after taking the oath, I pulled out, I'm going to date myself, but I pulled out a yellow pad and mm -hmm. a pen and <clears throat> designed from scratch a reentry initiative that was focused on first time, mostly first time um, drug sales offenders who were young adults right. who when they were convicted would be felons for life. 
I knew we needed to do this differently. I knew that most of these, and most of them were young men, most of these young men were in that predicament because they did not have any other opportunities or options. Um, they were doing it because it was a way to make some money. Hmm. And um, I wanted to... I wanted to use the power that I had to show everybody else that there is a, d a different way that this can be done. And so I created one of the first in the nation reentry initiatives. And I'll tell you, John, when I created this reentry initiative, it was called Back on Track. There were DAs who would say, what are you doing? You're supposed to lock people up, not let them out. And this out. was what year was this? 2004. Right, so this was, this was a long time ago. Not a lot of people ago. talking about criminal justice. No, reform. I mean, thankfully, <laughs> we've come a very far way in a relatively short period of time. But back then, oh, and then part of the way that we designed the program, it was about getting people job skills, development, and training, and, and jobs. Mm -hmm. And people would say to me, what are you doing? I haven't committed a crime, and I need a job. Why are you giving jobs to them? I mean, these this was the mentality, right? Yeah. But I didn't have to ask permission. I was the DA, I was elected, I could do what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to do what she wanted and she wanted to be the DA because she didn't need to ask permission to do what she wanted. So she wanted to be the DA because she didn't want to ask permission to do what she wanted. So permission, just D-E, I'm not allowed to do what I want, which kind of sounds like demon T-I, to be honest, to like, my D-I is centered around what I want to do. I wanted to do things differently than other people do things because I had my own way of doing things, but I needed permission to do the things that I wanted to do. That sounds very much like demon T-I. Um, permission to do the things that I wanted to do. All right, so here's Kamala during the first Democratic debate. So notice we have uh, Bernie Sanders right there. So he's double masculine, uh, double masculine demons. So IP, double masculine. As the youngest guy on the stage, I feel like I probably ought to contribute to the generation's conversation. part of Joe's generation. I'm all for Part of Joe's generation. Let me respond. Before we move on The issue, if I may say, is not generational. So notice lots of people talking over each other, and what is she doing? She's just kind of standing there waiting for everyone to kind of finish. So Bernie in particular is like really like just aggressively, masculinely pushing, right? She's not. Is that possibly feminine DE? Please, please. Yeah. The Senator issue Sanders, is and I'll let you generational. Like, yeah. I mean, she's also actually about to talk next, so that could also be why she's not talking over people. But it kind of seems like she doesn't really talk over people in the um, kind of aggressive, masculine way that, you know, someone like Bernie Sanders does. Who has the guts comment, comment. to take on Wall Street, to take on the fossil fuel industry, to take on the big money interests who have unbelievable influence over the economic and political life of this country? And so he ends up getting the platform, like he ends up talking because he's just like pushing, 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 pushing. Kamala is not. We will let you all speak. Senator Harris, please. Waiting, Harris. waiting. Hey guys, you know what? America does not want to witness a food fight. They want to know how we're going to put food on their table. Okay, and then here's what America wants. Right, I'm wondering, is that save your feelings? Standing on the feelings? Like, listen guys, everyone calm down in a feminine way, not in a masculine aggressive way, but like, let the people fight, and then they fight, 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 and then like, listen guys, kind of almost like a cat energy that, that comes out, and then like, listen guys, feeling like standing on the feelings and standing on the feelings of what other people want. America doesn't want a food fight. America wants this. Here's what America wants. So I'm wondering, is that feminine DE and then also save your feeling? That would be save your feminine FE. Maybe? 
so this is still all I've got for Kamala. Um, Savior SI, probably DE, although I only have that one clip where, where she was talking about permission, so I don't want to, um, you know, go all in on that. Um, but I'm thinking she would probably be somewhere in here. Um, and again, thought I was seeing Effie, but I just can't prove that at all, at all, at all, at all. Um, would not be surprised at all if she were TE. Um, but in general, I mean, she doesn't... Oh, 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 um, oh, I have one more clip about, uh, feminine DE. Hold on. All right, so I found a clip where you can see um, her feminine DE actually quite clearly. So this protester um, is going to rush on stage and just grab the microphone from her. So she just gives it to him. She just, he comes on stage and look, she just gives it to him. She's just like, oh, here you go. That's fine. And then she just stays there, even though the other people are kind of going after him. And she just, and then look, she just slyly walks away. You know, just like gets up out of her chair. And then other people. So this guy. Let me, oh, well, yeah. So that guy who's like wrestling the microphone away from, this guy is her husband. So he seems like he's like masculine DE, like I'm going to take this from you. Where she's like, ah, sure, you can take the microphone and then just, you know, walk away. So um, seems very much like um, feminine DE to me. Okay, and this is, I think, a really good example of double observing. Part of how I think about the what is at stake right now is, you know, a lot of people will talk about the current occupant of the White House and he shouldn't be there and we got to get rid of him. That's a given. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we really better be focused on the fact that even if the election in November of 2016 had turned out differently, we would still be a nation in flux. We would still be a world. In flux. So speculating, this is intuition. In flux. We have ascending and descending economies around the world, shifting populations in large part because of climate, cr the climate crisis. Right. Um, we have so we are in the midst of an industrial and digital revolution. So the question before us will. So there are all the sensory things that are going on. And here's the question before us. Here's the what's going on part. B, after November of 2020, what will America's standing be? in the midst of all of this flux. And part of the concern that I have is this. For the last couple of years, we've been staring at our belly button while the world is passing us by. And part of the failure of, of, of leadership is that we've not been addressing core issues that must be dealt with. And it is making us weaker. Mm -hmm. Congress is not acting on so many important issues. I've got a bipartisan bill with James Langford from Oklahoma because he and I for two years were the only two United States senators who were both on Homeland Security Committee and the Senate Intelligence Community Committee. So sensory, I have this physical bill that is currently going on. So we were in a unique position to receive a lot of information that demanded what we did, which is to create a priority around improving the security of elections. And the bill essentially would upgrade the state's election systems. Do you know they won't put it on the floor for a vote? It's a bipartisan bill. They won't put it on the floor for a vote. So this is- a And then they won't do that. It's the tribe that's stopping us. About critical infrastructure, our elections, not putting on the vote. You, you look at it in terms of the issues of infrastructure, period. Yeah. Where are we putting that on? We're not dealing with, with climate the climate crisis at all. We are not dealing with issues like immigration at all. So just speculation. Here's what's going on. Intuition. And nobody else is going to come into our country and fix our problems. And in the midst of us failing to address our problems... Others are growing and are moving into the places where we have left a space yeah. and a vacuum. And so this is... Again, here's just like what's going on in other places that I just happen to know without the sensory. 
The long way of saying this. On day one, part of my approach, the metaphorical day one, mm -hmm. part of my approach would be <clears throat> to bring Congress together and say, guys, we got to fix some things because we are becoming weak as a country yeah. because of our failure to come together and solve some critical issues and problems. So, I, I mean, I so no problem with intuition at all, like beautiful use of intuition. Her sensory is amazing. She had a little bit of sensory here, but you know, there were other clips where her sensory is just like spot on. Um, and then it's the people, the tribe that are preventing things from being fixed. So just, God, single decider? EJ? I guess so. And I had the power to do that because I was the Attorney General. And so I would encourage folks that when you think about um, what is available to you in terms of reaching your goal, don't accept anyone's limitations about how you can do that. You can be in the room at the table where the decisions are being made, or you can be outside and be equally effective, but don't don't exclude yourself from the opportunity to be in the room where the decisions are being made. Okay, so that actually kind of gives me some pause in terms of typing her as an EJ. Like when she says that, don't exclude yourself from being in the room where the decisions are made. She's not saying it like this was some, you know, amazing discovery for her. It was just like, oh yeah, you know, don't exclude yourself from being in the room where the decisions are made. Like I could do this thing because I had, you know, I was powerful as the district attorney. And um, so, you know, I was able to be in the room where the decisions were made. Like it's not like the biggest deal in the world when she brings it up. Um, so that makes me think that was the vibe that I was getting before. Like before I listened to that other clip that I just played where I feel like I could really see double observing and single deciding. This was the vibe that I was picking up, where it was like, yeah, 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 you should, you know, be part of the decision-making process, as if it's not, like, the end of the world, you know? Or not, like, the most gigantic, amazing discovery. She just has, like, you know, kind of a calm demeanor. She's not, like, uh, you know, going crazy or anything. So, I don't know. Spinning on the EJ, IJ thing, I guess. Uh Hillary Clinton's campaign manager said he believed a double standard applied uh, to women. That that's not the only thing that's driving some of the kind of historic unfavorable numbers for her, but that he thinks it's very real. What do you think? I think that, that, that to be sure, I mean, I'm a career prosecutor. I was elected as the first district attorney of San Francisco and the first attorney general of California. So starts with the sensory, goes back to where she's been before she goes to where she's going which means I'm the top law enforcement officer of the state of California. And there were a lot of people who doubted that I would be elected for that reason. Um, they said, you know, well-meaning people, but, you know, no one like you has done this before, and that's going to be a challenge, and people aren't prepared for someone like you holding that position. So there are challenges, but equally... So she's recognizing that the tribe is saying people aren't going to be prepared for you holding this office. People are going to doubt that you can do it. People are... Uh, you know, saying these doubtful things about you. So she's aware of the tribe doubts, um, but she's not going all in on it. She's not saying like, oh, and then I felt like I didn't deserve this, you know? So aware of the tribe, but not going super all in on like EJ level, oh my gosh, I didn't deserve this. Or I felt like I wasn't worthy type of thing. Really important, and I think the Congresswoman is absolutely correct. When we understand that, and then through your leadership and women and, and men like you pulling together an, an infrastructure to encourage those women to have faith that they actually can do it and building. So then deferring to the tribe, saying people like you and your leadership are the ones who develop infrastructure so that women can be lifted up, so that women can, I forget the phrasing that she used, but like. Um, you know, feel like they can do it, like empower women type of a message. So essentially saying it's the tribe that gives women the empowerment to feel like they are able to do to do these things that maybe they would otherwise feel like they're unable to do. The infrastructure around them, anything can be done. But I think also the point that you were asking about um, fundraising is a very real one for women. Women, um, it, it, most women are taught to be independent. 
And to be independent means don't ask anyone for money. <laughs> <laughs> and then you run for office and you have to ask everybody for money. And there's a real psychological burden that associates with that. Right. And so the, what, what I mentor women who are ready for office, I say, listen, just be clear. You're not asking someone to buy you a pair of shoes. Yeah. Um, it's about having them invest in what they believe is in the best interest of their community, their families, and the issues. So there's a psychological burden associated with asking the tribe to help you. And um, when you do ask them to help you, it's not like you're asking them to buy you a pair of shoes, which is kind of like, you're not asking them to just like invest in some, um, you know, flippant thing that, that you love, right? You're asking them to invest in their own values, their own community, something that's like useful for them. So I'm trying to like, she phrases that as like, the reason why she feels a psychological burden is because um, women are conditioned to feel independent. So she's phrasing it as independence, you know, like like she feels like this because she is independent and wants to do her own thing and doesn't want people to help her. Um, but she's also saying like she doesn't want people to or she feels burdened by having people sort of give to her. So I'm wondering what would someone with DI say? They would be more along the lines of, like, the first part would be, okay, maybe they heard the tribe say you're not prepared to, you know, hold this position, yada, 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 but they'd be kind of like, fuck you, tribe. Like, this is, of course I can do this, and I'm going to do this, right? That would be more the DI thing. And then on the fundraiser end, it'd be more like, well, of course the tribe wants to support me and give to me and support my ideas and my thing that I'm doing and my this, my that, you know, where she's like, oh, I like I, there's a burden associated with asking people for help. Um, that's kind of scary, but it's OK. At least I'm not asking them for a pair of shoes. So this is leaning very DE to me. We have seen a level of hate rise like we have not seen in a long time and in these last two and a half years it has received new fuel these last two years and some months have certainly caused a lot of us to start speaking to an inanimate object called a television and to shout at that thing it has caused a lot of us to go through individual and group therapy. It has caused a lot of us to, to feel a bit of despair and depression and anxiety. And Speculating about what the tribe feels. We feel depression. We feel despair. We feel anxiety. Fear. And I say... Don't let the bad guys win. Don't let them win. When they are spewing hate, when they are trying to divide us, let us remember our strength. You know, we are... Don't let the bad guys win. Don't let them spew hate. This is decider talk. This is EJ talk. This is just like major decider... Like, the scary thing is the tribe. The people are the scary thing. It's not the things, it's the people. So, like, how did I miss this before? It seems so clearly now decider talk, which before was just like, I didn't see it. I totally thought she was a double decider. But this is, like, decider talk. Don't let the bad guys win. Don't let the bad guys spew hate. The bad guys are the problem. The bad guys are the scary thing. It's about the people who are terrifying. So I think she's an EJ. All right, this is actually what I've got for her. Oh my God, this video is going to be so long, but that's okay. So just to kind of review all of the parts that I have so far, I hope you didn't watch this whole video because this is gonna be just so long. Turns out my screen was all fucked up. These are the parts that I was seeing. Um, okay, so the most, I think the clearest coin that I can see is SI. Um, save your sensory, and then that sensory is SI. 
She uses so much intuition, so much intuition. I mean, like a massive amount of intuition and her intuition is like amazing. So she's not missing intuition in any way, but she's standing on the sensory and she almost always goes to the sensory first before she goes to the intuition. Like when she tells a blaster story, she will start with the sensory and then go to the intuition. So sensory comes first. Sensory is stronger. Sensory is the thing that, that she stands on. Sensory is just seems like the savior. And especially when she's, um, you know, in congressional hearings and when she's, you know, questioning people, she's just so good at like hammering on that sensory, just like hammering on the facts, just standing on the facts. So absolutely, absolutely savior SI. And I also suspect her SI might be masculine. I don't have a good handle on that, but when she's really hammering people in those hearings, it is like, like it just, her sensory is so strong. It doesn't seem like she's like forgetting shit, you know? It seems like her sensory is very, very strong. So I would highly suspect savior masculine SI. Um... And then next most obvious coin is Blast. She just has a lot of Blast. She's constantly doing a Blaster lesson. Um, and when, you know, someone asks her something that she, like, doesn't know about it, doesn't know about, she has a prepared Blaster lesson to go to. So she's just constantly giving little Blaster lessons. Um, so there's no way in hell that she's Blast Last. And I highly suspect that she's Lead Blast. And in fact, I'm kind of thinking she might be double activated lead blast. So um, it's hard to get a handle on her animals uh, because she feels like she's kind of covering all her bases on her animals. You know, she's not like struggling with the play. She's not struggling with the sleep. She sure as hell is not struggling with the blast. Um, consume is really hard to see though. Uh, but I kind of was wondering if she was consume last, not because I saw any indication of consume last, but more because I saw what seems like double activated blast. And then I'm seeing play and sleep, it seems like. So I really, I just have no idea on our animals. Um, second most obvious coin is, um, DE. So I had her as maybe potentially DI before, you know, I had the DIs here and I erased them because I just thought she's definitely, definitely DE. She's absolutely leaving a void of kind of just talking about herself. You know, whenever she's in conversations, it just always gets turned around to the other person, to the tribe. Here are just, she's always talking about the other guy, you know, and never talking about her compared to Bernie Sanders, who is an IP, so DI at the top, um, he's always talking about his own ideas. Here's what he thinks. Here's what he wants to do. Um, he's just like constantly running back to, here's what I think. Here's what I want to do. Here's, you know, my opinion. And um, Kamala is constantly running to, here's what the tribe feels, actually. Here's how the tribe feels, but here's what's good for the tribe. Here's what we should do for the tribe. Here's, you know, just talk, constantly talking about the tribe, constantly deferring to other people. So DE is also very obvious. And then also feminine DE. So um, she, you know, when she's in situations where people are talking over her, like in debates or in hearings or other just like conversations where people are just like yelling at each other. She's never the one to jump in and be like, mur, 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 you know, she will wait and kind of wait till things calm down and then jump into her own blaster thing. So, um, seems very feminine to eat. And then there was also that situation where there was some guy who like ran on stage and like grabbed the microphone from her and she just like gave it to him. She was just like, Oh yeah, sure. Here you go. You know, there was no sense of fighting with the tribe. So I saw zero fighting with the tribe. She'll fight you on the sensory. Like she will hammer you on the facts because that seems to be what she's hammering on. But she won't hammer like on the individual, you know, on the actual tribe member. So I'm suspecting feminine DE. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure about feminine DE. And then I'm suspecting masculine DI, which would be audio, but I, maybe she could be double feminine. I don't know. 
Um, and then the thing that I've been uh, going back and forth on is her decider. So now I'm actually, I'm fairly sure of Effie after watching her enough. Um, okay, so I'm sure of, pretty sure of DE and also sure of Savior feeling, you know, feeling over thinking because when she's standing on something, she's absolutely standing on values. You know, she's not like, I'm going to bang around the, you know, logic box with you. She's like, I'm standing on what is valuable. That's the thing that she will absolutely run to. So it seems definitely save your feeling. But I wasn't necessarily seeing Effie. I was sometimes, but it wasn't like, once I like got Effie in my head, it wasn't like, oh, I'm seeing Effie just like everywhere. You know, it was like, I'm seeing values everywhere. And I'm also seeing DE. So that must mean Effie, you know? Um, but I didn't have like a really amazing clip that was like, oh, that must be Effie. But it seems like she's gotta be Effie, even though I'm, I'm not crossing up the TEs because TEs can use a lot of um, values as well. So not crossing those guys off. And then um, I'm thinking she's an EJ. Yeah, that's still hard for me to see and I'm not very confident on that. I thought, at first that she was a double decider because she doesn't seem to be going all in on crazy EJ talk. You know, she's not all in on like blaming that guy. He's the one that makes me feel not valuable. And um, she's not like going all in on like the tribe makes me feel like I'm, you know, a little person and they're putting me down and, and you know, things like that. So, um, She's not crazy all in on EJ decider stuff, but when I really listen to her language, she's talking about the people, she's not concerned about things, and she leaks out little, little hints that suggest that the people are the problem, the people are the thing that she needs to overcome, not the information. Um, and I could see both double observing and single deciding. I could see her going back between sensory and intuition really well. I could see her going going back and forth between what has happened in the past and speculating about the future really well, really easily, like naturally back and forth with no fear, no like, oh no, we don't understand what was going on and like, that's the problem. There was none of that. But she did leak out little bits and pieces of um, you know, here's what's going on. I can see what's going on in both sensory and intuition, but the people are preventing this from happening. It's, you know, Congress who's not doing this. It's this guy who's not doing it. It's, it's this other guy who's not doing this thing. It's, it's the people that are the problem. So there's just little things in her language that make me suspect that she's an EJ, but I don't really want to go all in on that yet. Or I should say, like, I'm not I'm not crossing off the IJs. Um, and then in terms of contradictions, so um, I guess this first one I have here, not leaving a void of intuition, which that would make sense if she's a double observer. Um, but if she were an IJ, she, I mean, she's got some good-ass intuition if she is an IJ. Like, she does not seem to have any problems with the intuition at all. Um, second contradiction is that she really does not have freakouts around um, like EJ bullshit, you know? She'll, there's subtle hints of EJ-isms, but not like a ton. It's not like slapping me in the face with like cringy decider freakouts. Um, she was even talking about, uh, you know, the reason why she uh, wanted to be district attorney because she would have permission to do what she wanted to do. Um, and she talked about how she feel like felt like she didn't have permission, but then once she became the district attorney, she just had permission, and then she did the things that she wanted to do. She wasn't freaking out about it. She said it, but it wasn't you know the end of the world or anything. She was she was fine about it. Um, so that's a little like, would an EJ be that okay with? Oh, I felt like I didn't have permission, and then I did this thing, and then I gave per got my, got permission, and then it was fine, you know. She's also not having any freakouts around being the top decision maker. So this is actually probably the biggest contradiction and thing that makes me um, second guess EJ the most. Um, 
Because the DIs are the ones who are often at the top. The DIs are often the ones who are the leaders. The DIs are the ones who are the top decision makers. The DIs are the ones who are like, yeah, I'll take the reins. I'll be the guy at the top. Like, I have the confidence in myself to do this and make decisions for other people because my DI is at the top. Whereas the DEs and especially the EJs are, like, too scared to do that too scared to like go and be the top person at the top of the mountain and like make all the decisions and be like the DI leader, you know? Um, She doesn't seem to have that, which is great for the person who's running for the vice presidency. That's great, you know, yay. But if she is an EJ, I would expect at least a little bit of hesitancy about being the top Decision made. I mean, she ran for the fucking president of the United States. Like, <laughs> talk about being the top dog, you know? And just making, like, the big decisions at the top of the tribe. And she's not afraid of that at all. That is interesting to me. Okay, so then just put that aside for a second. Um, and then the last contradiction is that she has... Um, really clear idea of what she wants to do. So especially if she is demon TI and she's an EJ, so she has TI at the bottom, she really knows exactly what she wants to do. And it sounds to me, just from her language, it sounds like it is her DI that she's talking about. Like when she talked about, um, uh, you know, being a prosecutor or like when she became the district attorney, I think, Yeah, it was the permission thing. When she became the district attorney, she had the permission to do what she wanted to do. And she was like, I had a vision. I had a, it sounds like an SI plan. An SI plan for what I wanted to do. But it was like, I had clarity on my own DI opinion, what I wanted to do. And I had no problem with that. I just needed to get into that office. So I had the permission to do that. And then I just did what I wanted to do. And like, no big deal. So... I would think an EJ would be a little more hesitant about that or not have as much of a handle on their own DI, especially if it's TI and it's like what I want to do. Um, Yeah, I wouldn't expect her to have as strong of a handle on what I want to TI do. So that's also giving me a little bit of hesitancy. Um, But in general, all the other things seem to be there. So, I don't know. We'll see. Kamala is quickly becoming someone that I am just, like, absolutely falling in love with. You know, she's just, she seems very balanced. She's not, if she is an ESFJ, she's not having the freakouts that I would expect her to have. She seems just so grounded and sane and just, like, has a good head on her shoulders and just, like, Okay, so I also, like, I wasn't looking into her politics at all this week, right? Like, that's not what this was about. I was just looking into her as a human being, her personality, who she is, trying to understand Kamala as, Kamala, excuse me, as a person. Um, And I feel like for someone who's going to be, you know, the VP, like, I feel like she's not going to be sidetracked by all of her crazy EJ bullshit, at least compared to someone like Hillary or, you know, another EJ who's kind of more all in on, you know, the decider crap. Um, so, yeah, I just she's becoming someone who I just I love her. She's amazing. She's great. She's lovely and adorable. And I feel like she's not leaving that many voids. Little voids, sure. She definitely has like a little bit of a void of DI, um, but not anything crazy. And uh, she just seems, she seems great. I just love her. Um, um, so yeah, it was really fun getting to know Kamala this week. I really, really love her. I think she's awesome. I think she uh, she's really hard to type because she's so balanced, which makes me feel so good as someone who may be the vice president of the United States. So that's good. And yeah, this was really great. All right, see you next week.